All right. Every year I do a series of, let's call them columns, lists, posts, uh, things where I review a bunch of black metal. Nothing but black metal November was a challenge that a lot of my friends used to do. Uh, online communities where, you know, maybe pre forum where we just kind of hang out in chat rooms and we would uh, make lists of all the black metal albums we listened to and shared them with friends so that we'd all catch up with everything that happened that year in black metal and uh, see what we missed, see what was cool, and see what was outside of the usual fucking hype circles. But uh, I just choose rec records that are just have stuck in my uh, in rotation and uh, pick from them randomly. A lot of these were leftovers from uh, October. So uh, the focus here is not to really go far in depth. Uh, I'm just presenting records that are worth checking out and not all of them are great. Uh, the, normally I'll put the best ones at the top and then I don't think I'll talk about all of these, but I'll at least talk about a number of them. Uh, there should be three or four parts to this this month. I don't know if I'm up for doing one every week. We'll see. Uh, but uh, Faustian Spirit is a Chilean black metal band uh, who formed very recently uh, between some known musicians and bands like... Uh, so Insurrection, you should probably check out their debut. I think it was recently released on physical format. Uh, and then there's members from really great bands like Perverser in here too. Uh, this is what I would consider a typical sort of Norwegian slash sweet Swedish treatment of um, classic early 90s black metal, sans any keyboards. There's a couple of organs in the middle of the record, but most of this is driven by riffs and by uh, unique vocal performances. And as, I mean, just looking at this record, you can see the reference, you can see the, uh, the sort of finer work up front. And that is reflected in the album. I think it's one of the better black metal records I've listened to this year. And it just took me a while to get around to it. Because I guess this released uh, digitally way before uh, vinyl comes out, which is in November. So I, I would watch out for that one and check out these songs. I think if you're a fan of like uh, sort of mid-90s Satyricon and uh, there's even a little bit of Swedish uh, melodic black metal in there too. Uh, the, it's just a great record. I put a pretty high recommendation on it, and uh, I still stand by that. Uh, if you are as big of a fr fan of French black metal uh, over the years, I think you'll understand why this appeals to me. Uh, these guys are French, but they relocated to Montreal. And there's a little bit of both sides of that similar coin in their music, in the sense that... Um, well, they don't sound like Pest Noir necessarily, but there is sort of a, uh, we're, they're killers on the streets here. They're, uh, there's a really strong narrative value to the lyrics and the story they're telling. It's performative. It's a little bit drunken. It's a little bluesy, uh, but it's mostly just sort of, uh, deeply melodic, uh, black metal driven by uh, very strong guitar performances, which are yeah, typically melodic and lead driven. Uh, so very tuneful. Uh, I just, I really enjoyed this. I, I think the album cover is as ugly as shit, but still it, it represents uh, the music in the right way. I think they, they did a good job with uh, the full whole, whole thing. Um, and uh, that's just a particularly to my taste kind of uh, release. Uh, and I, I think that that will reveal its interesting character soon enough if you pick it up. There are typical songs on there, but then there's a couple of slower, sort of more narrative and frustrated songs, I guess I would say, that are uh, very entertaining. And I think uh, there's a lot of uh, value there for people who are willing to dig a little bit deeper into a record rather than face value which I, I typically am. So there you go. Uh, I don't feel like I got more than face value out of Necromutilator's uh, latest release. I think it's the third third full length, uh, if I'm right. This is a, a bestial black death metal band with some thrash influences, uh, nothing too pronounced in the thrash realm. Uh, 
I didn't find anything too exceptional about their sound, but I think it's just uh, a lot of what I like about Black Death Metal and is that sort of a South American aggression that you'll find in like Slot Bath and Force of Darkness. And obviously there's some relation to like an angel corpse in there too. Uh, the big thing about this record is that it definitely has riffs. And I mean that if you, what all that means whenever I say that is that you like to pick up a guitar and play a riff and you like the feeling of playing a great death metal riff. They're all over this record. So, uh, especially the, the first few tracks in the album have the most impact in that regard. So sample that, but also kick back to like the side, the second half of it and see if that still registers for you on, on that part of it. Still a pretty high recommendation on that one. Uh, Vampiric writes, man, this is a weird one. Uh, not in terms of the music. I think it's a pretty solid atmospheric black metal with sort of a, uh, like if, if you're familiar with earlier ancient, there's a little bit of that in there where the keyboards, uh, play both a prominent and a sort of supportive role in different melodic generations. Uh, but the, this is an interesting one because they're based out of Ecuador. They began as a very raw band, a raw, raw black metal band. They released a ton of records for the, for a couple of years. And then unfortunately the, the, uh, one of the main performers passed away in 2021, I think. And they immediately recorded this album with someone else. I don't, you know, I don't know what, what all that's about, but they got right back to it, released another bunch of things. And this is sort of the latest thing they've finally been able to release. And, uh, it's totally different. It, they, they hired an Argentinian, they collaborated with an Argentinian artist who has a very different style on guitar. And he is quite prominent with his use in keyboards and generating mel melody. So I don't know if this is a continuation of their sound since he's less since left the band. But it is a very different record than the first one. It's much less raw, much less brutal. The drumming is very different in shape and style. So by giving the songwriting lead to someone else, they they kind of, it's a strange one, but it's a good record anyway. So that's kind of where I landed with it was like, I don't, this, these are, this is an odd set of circumstances and a pretty good record. Uh, so I had to recommend it because it, it's, it's really cool to get into, but a lot of the information has kind of got in the way of like just enjoying it. So that's kind of the curse of giving a shit about the details is you sometimes it's like someone else wrote it. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. It's, it's a good record though. Uh, you know, another record, uh, that, uh, well, I picked this one up myself. I bought, bought a copy of it and, um, I just, uh, I was impressed with their, their sort of EP slash debut. Uh, and this continues on that sound, uh, cranking up some of the dramatism, some of the, uh, choral vocals, some of the, uh, not symphonic, but definitely, uh, keyboard driven work. And, uh, definitely you're going to feel the, uh, both the Scandinavian and the German influence. I compared this band to Lunar Aurora at first, the, the first couple records from them, but I could see why people uh, compare them to more obvious uh, influences from Norway otherwise. Uh, anyway, it's a great record. Uh, I don't have that much to say about it. Uh, didn't have much information. I just bought it and liked it. So that was just me picking it up. Um, so I don't really get what this record is trying to do or if, you know, whatever it's all about, um, Braun, Bran, whatever, whatever, how you say that, uh, this debut is pretty weird. There's 20 minutes split between two songs on this record that is purely instrumental post -at slash atmospheric black metal and but they have riffs, so it kind of works. But those two bookends, which are very long and pretty boring overall, sandwich quite good songs with vocals in the middle. Kind of the other 20, 50, 20 to 15 minutes in the middle. And uh, it's a pretty weird result from 
folks who are known for sort of kind of goofy heavy metal bands and uh, not very well known thrash metal bands uh, out of Czech, uh, Czechia. So yeah, it's it's an interesting take on black metal and, and what, whatever it means. Uh, it's it was still engaging interesting uh but uh it's hard it was really hard to sit through that for that first listen where that first song is like nine minutes long and then the vocals never arrive the guitar melody just keeps going and nothing sort of comes of that other than just here's our instrumental you know i i just hate that on records so uh it was hard to move past that but the, like i said there's a sort of a pagan black metal feeling in the middle of the record that is very effective and so I, I had the patience to sit with it and it was a cool result i don't know how you know how much i'd recommend half of the record but the half that i liked was very good um i don't really like uh aara however you pronounce her name but i liked uh, the first song on this seven inch split or seven inch uh, record uh it was a good melodic black metal song. The other song was bad. I just didn't like it. That was the whole review. So uh, I added Four Listen and Black Terrain, the, their uh, second full length, um, to this list because it was described as black doom metal. And uh, I hadn't really spent much time with it. I previewed it and decided not to review it. But... Um, yeah, I didn't, uh, for a full review, I didn't really get, I like, I, you're going to need patience to approach this record because it is very much a post metal record, uh, a sort of post doom metal record. It's ambient, semi black and metal. There is an actual black metal burst that lasts about six minutes in the middle of the record. So that is there. And it, so it is black metal adjacent. Uh, and it comes from people who are well known for kind of post metal and very unique uh, black metal adjacent projects. So uh, overall, it's very good, but it wasn't really right for this list. And I just left it on there because I'd taken the time to listen to it five or six times and uh, determined, you know, it's not really my thing. And I hate to be that limiting, but there is so much patience involved where if I'm not somewhere I want to be within five minutes, it's, it's probably just not going to be a full recommendation for me no matter what. Uh, but it is the kind of band that I do like to see live. So I, I think that there's no reason to pass up on uh, keeping them in mind. And I, I really think the, the artistic value here is obviously very high. I think the, the cover is really evocative and, uh, from what I've read about the record, there's a, quite a lot of meaning behind what they're doing. Um, so if the idea of atmospheric progressive metal interests you, then there's something there for you. Um, but I'm just kind of an idiot about that, where if, you know, a 20 minute opener just doesn't get me, I'm kind of already ready to move on. But I really liked the last song and if you've ever seen me review a post metal album that was a little bit sleepy, you realize that, yeah, there's like five minutes on every record that I like when they're building up to that crescendo, but I don't like the buildup all the time. This was one of those cases where I liked where it ended up. I didn't really like waiting for it every time. So not to overstate myself there, but uh, Profanity Angel is a Polish like death metal band, very much a sort of war metal type of band. Uh, I hear Archcoat up front. You can fill in the blanks however you see fit. Uh, I hate to just say Archcoat and Blasphemy for every uh, war metal band that I come across. This does start to lean death metal towards the end of the EP, but it's a, a brutal, furious, very impressive uh, bout of harassment. Yeah, I mean, this is a pissed off, loud, and co cool kind of record in that sense. Uh, debate the value of pure aggression all you want. I this is just quick and effective, and I enjoyed it. Uh, Helvelin uh, is one of many bands from a 
uh, an artist who goes by PG, who is in uh, Thy Dying Light and uh, a few other bands. Uh, I forget the other ones. Uh, so what, what this record does, and I feel like I'm just sort of passing by it because it didn't really hit me, but it's sort of like that Transylvania, Transylvania hunger black metal is, is like a genre in itself. And I, I really like that type of thing. But at this point, there has to be something a little bit more profound about that sort of drunken sway, the sort of uh, amateurish wobble to it. And this isn't amateurish. This is a nice professional black metal record. It's well done. Uh, but it really didn't hit at any point for me. It was just kind of happening in front of me rather than grabbing at me with anything profound. So, yeah, I put a black metal record on and I'll enjoy it. Uh, but I don't like to feel like I'm just participating in the zeitgeist. I, you know, I want something important and special every time I pick up a black metal record. And this just this was just there, you know. Um, Sacrilegia is a... Technically, they're like a black and death rash metal band who are... They lean sort of towards uh, black thrash and heavy metal more classic thrash influenced on their debut. This is a little bit more uh, what I would consider uh, bestial black death metal influenced, where it's a, uh, a little bit more aggressive, like thrashing, but not quite so, so uh, stuck on the, the classic thrash aspect of it. So uh, a lot of people compared them to Destroyer 666 on their first uh, their first record. Uh, this one, I wouldn't say quite as much. Uh, and, uh, some of the songs really hit, and some of them just kind of buzzed by. It, it, it didn't really knock me over, but it was still, I just love this style. So I, yeah, I was uh, was excited about that one, but I never fully reviewed it. So I wanted to make sure I at least mentioned it. Because I think they're cool guys, and I think that first record rules. So I want more of that. So, um, uh, Fur Tan is a, a post black metal band from Germany. I'm not really gonna. Yeah, I won't go into these too much. Uh, I won't go into the. You know, there's no reason to go into the full, full article uh, when we're hitting sort of below the seven out of ten mark. Uh, but those are there if you'd like to get the details on those. I just thought it would be cool to talk a little bit about. Uh, these columns that I'll continue to do. I won't introduce the other ones, but they're here if you like black metal and you want to, you know, see about, I'll probably end up writing about 45 or so short reviews for black metal in November. So check that out. 